Okay. Welcome everyone. My name is Kavya Suresh. I'm a junior at San Marcos High School and I'm the ASB student's representative and I'm also the student board member for the Santa Barbara Unified School District. Hi everyone, I'm Issa Morales. I'm a senior at the public as well as DP's ASB student representative. We want to start off by giving a huge thank you to our La Colina Advanced Band right here, directed by Stephen Hughes, for providing such wonderful music tonight. These students have worked incredibly hard. They meet every morning during zero period, which is, starts almost an hour before the regular school day begins, which just shows their dedication and passion to music. And every winter, the advanced band participates in winter parades in Santa Barbara and Galita in a special event called March Around the Schools. Last year, La Colina's advanced band earned a superior at rating at the SBCC String and Wind Festival, which is the highest rating possible. And now our band will play one last song for us called Dr. Rockenstein. appreciation for our sponsors who have been such important partners in making the work of the Santa Barbara Education Foundation possible. Thank you to Sage Publications, Griffith and Thornburg, Atkinson, Andelson, Loya Rudd and Romo, Chevron, KBZ Architects, Raymond James, RSH Construction, Santa Barbara City College Foundation, Santa Barbara Historical Museum, Cottage Health, DA Davidson, Dennis Thompson Architect, Tisha Ford, Hoback Lewin, MSFA, Montecito Bank and Trust, the Montecito Journal, Pueblo Radiology Medical Group, and Shipper Construction. Can we please give our sponsors a huge round of applause for the phenomenal support. We'd also like to give a very special shout out to Superintendent Hilda Maldonado. Um, 
SB Unified School Board President, Wendy Sims Moten. <laughs> Vice President, Virginia Alvarez. <laughs> and SB County Superintendent of Schools, Susan Salcido. Thank you all so much for being here. We also hope y'all have had the opportunity to try some of the delicious food here tonight, courtesy of our high school culinary programs and our generous restaurant donors. Can we please give a huge round of applause to all the high school students and the directors here tonight? Thank you to Terry Ingram from Dos Pueblos High School, Donna Barker from San Marcos High School, and Ann Gott from Santa Barbara High School. The culinary programs are a part of the career and technical education at all of our high schools. These programs provide students with incredible opportunities to receive firsthand experience and, and working kitchen for careers in the food service industry. Many students are given internships and jobs at local eateries and even earn dual enrollment college credit with SBCC. Additionally, we'd like to thank Apples to Zucchini Cooking School, La Paloma Cafe, Namita's Cuisine, Via Maestro 42, and Third Window Brewing for donating their time and delicious food. And now, without further ado, we are delighted to invite Dr. Pedro Paz, the Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Education Foundation, to deliver a few words. I hope everyone's having a great time. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here on behalf of the Santa Barbara Ed Education Foundation, its board, and its staff. We'd like to warmly welcome you to the 2023 HOPE Awards. In case you don't know, uh, as you've heard from the student MCs, my name is Pedro Paz. I'm the executive director of the Santa Barbara Education Foundation. This is not my first time at the HOPE Awards. Actually, I've uh, previously served on the Santa Barbara Unified School District's Board of Education and attended a few HOPE Awards. And certainly hope and plan on being here for future ones. Before moving on, I'd like to thank the staff of Santa Barbara Education Foundation. We have a few people. Katie Shopa, I don't know where is Katie. Okay. Ellie Chavez, I see her way, way back there. Nina Dunbar is right, right up here. And especially, I uh, want to thank Melissa Davenport. Uh, I don't know where Melissa is. She's right over there. <laughs> also like to thank our Hope Awards Committee and all of the volunteers that make this event possible. So thank you, all of you. Tonight, we are here to honor two wonderful community members who have, throughout their careers, supported education, impacted students, and made efforts to better this part of the world that we all call home. State Senator Monique Limon, sitting right here in front of me. And retired and former San Marcos High School athletic director, Abe Jahanami, who's right over there. I have to, I have to quickly mention that um, when I got on school board, it was Monique, that one of the people that convinced me to, to run for school board. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, and I have to share that Abe was my soccer coach when I was about 12. <laughs> so I have uh, some deep connections to both our honorees tonight, so uh, it definitely feels like home, so thank you. We're also here to celebrate teachers some of the most influential people in the lives of students, as you can see. You may or may not know, but I'm married to one of those teachers who I know every day seeks to challenge, inspire, and move her students to love the Spanish language as she does. She's right over there. And it's Whitney. <laughs> so tonight we are here to raise money that will directly impact their work. And by association, the children whose lives we seek to improve. To highlight this, a 
2019 edutopia.org article demonstrated the importance of teachers. Compared to any other aspect of schooling, teachers have the greatest impact on student achievement. A well-trained teacher is likely is more likely to send more students to college and can boost a class, class's lifetime income by $250,000. As you may know, the founding of the Santa Barbara Education Foundation started with providing classroom mini grants, and those were provided from 1986 to 1994. And now we are back doing it again. I would also, also like to take this moment to edu update you on a little bit of the work that we're doing at the Education Foundation. This year, we have embarked on a new strategic planning process that we hope will assist uh, refining our work as we move forward. We also, with the leadership of Ellie Chavez, who's in the back, we launched a new student grant program. It's the first time we've ever focused grants on students, and we just uh, approved uh, about, I don't know, I think 11, 10? Yeah, thank you. And finally, we continue to support students through our signature and fiscally sponsored programs, filling a gap that public education cannot. Now, I'd like to introduce you to Superintendent Hilda Maldonado, who will speak about the importance of our teacher grant programs and supporting teachers. Please give her a warm welcome. Thank you. I sincerely hope that all of you enjoy being here tonight with us, so thank you for being here. Good evening, everyone. Come on, you guys can do better. Good evening and buenas noches. Thank you so much. Welcome to the 2023 Hope Awards. Believe it or not, I'm finishing my third year as the proud superintendent of Santa Barbara Unified School District. Thank you. Yes, I survived. <laughs> I am so excited to be here with all of you tonight to celebrate tonight's honorees for the Hope Awards. Our Honorable State Senator Limon and our amazing coach Abe Jahadami, who I don't know how many CIF awards you won, competitions. Athletics is not my thing, but we're so proud of all the work you did and all the lives you changed, including Pedro's. So thank you for that. Um, and of course, to celebrate the incredible innovations and project-based programs that many of our wonderful teachers are implementing across our 721 classrooms in Santa Barbara Unified. Our partnership with Santa Barbara Education Foundation is extra special. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention how pivotal it was before, during, and after uh, this unprecedented pandemic. As a district, we are incredibly fortunate for this partnership with the foundation, which I consider an extension of our school district. An organization that adapts, evolves, and is flexible to the ever-changing complexities of our school system and the students that we serve. As a complex system of schools that is funded by both state and federal governments, we are in a unique position to provide public education to more than 1,200 students across 20 schools. Our budget of close to two, two and a half, 211, let me start again. Our budget of close to 211 million is mostly funded by our community property taxes. But as may, some of you may know, it comes with many strings attached. Our district enrollment consists of two-thirds of the students in grades 7 to 12, which is very unique for a unified school district, which means that almost 9,000 students of the 12,000 we serve are in secondary schools programs. And, and as you can imagine, the cost of staffing programs like that, which include academics, athletics, and the arts, brings a different dollar amount than you would in a smaller school system or as an elementary school system. As an immigrant child who grew up in poverty, I know all too well what it means to live in poverty and to receive an education in school systems that sometimes by design are built to perpetuate the same inequality in socioeconomics because they lack resources and extra support. Thankfully, we have educators and philanthropists like you that believe in the potential to change lives. 
We are dream makers, hope dealers, and inspiration to those who refuse to believe that public education and supported, who refuse to believe that public education and supporting it changes lives. To me, the Santa Barbara Edford Foundation provides a lifeline of hope to our school district. Through the funding of the We Care campaign during the pandemic, we were able to meet families' needs for the most needy in an adaptable way. We imagined a new way of providing support that centered that voice. In helping others, one must have the ability and patience to understand what they need without judgment or preconceived ideas for what we believe they need. And I was so grateful that they have listened to some of the needs we brought to the foundation and met us there. Some of the grants that were funded that you're gonna hear more about were grants like that of our teacher, Sean Federbush from Adams Elementary, the LED light project. And I know you'll speak a little later, Sean. And I got a chance to see a little bit, and it was not just a STEM program and a light project, but really an integration of uh, science and the arts. And I think as we think about the fact that we serve 21st century learners, our kids are not like us old people that had one, one way of thinking about school in one subject area and felt relegated to one body of study. But our students are incredibly nimble and adaptable and can see the connections between so many of our topics. And I wanna thank you for bringing that and meeting our students in the 21st century. You're gonna hear, I think, or in other projects, the Franklin Music and Dance Project at Franklin Elementary by Sochi Tafoya, which really brings the cultural training and music and art that our children really connect to so that they feel that school is relevant to them and sees who they are and brings in some of them their home uh, traditions. I know myself, when I hear that music, my heart feels very different by the end of it. And of course, uh, books. Uh, for the classroom library at McKinley. We have the McKinley principal here today, Ms. Daisy Ochoa, thank you. And uh, books for personal identity for like Mr. James Claffey at Santa Barbara High. And I know we have the high, uh, Santa Barbara High principal, Dr. Lee Simmons here tonight as well. In fact, let me take a moment to thank the teachers, principals, my cabinet who are all here tonight. Can we give them a big, nice round of applause? And I know that we also have, um, I didn't get to uh, Mr. Hughes, the band teacher, and of course, Principal Jen Foster from La Colina. Thank you for that wonderful music. And I also wanna recognize that we have many past board members from Santa Barbara Unified here tonight. So can we give them a nice round of applause? So to end, I wanna say that this year's HOPE Awards represent an investment in the innovative ways our teachers see their students' needs. They have the most important role to play in our children's lives, like Pedro said. Can you imagine having a job where you get to shape the minds, the hearts, the soul, and the lives of the next generation of scientists, artists, engineers, doctors, lawyers, athletes, poets, writers? We can just keep going on and on. It is an incredibly honorable career and it is such an honor for us to have incredible teachers doing that work daily in our classrooms. So just like we adapted and evolved while remaining steadfast in our goals to help children, the Santa Barbara Ed Foundation has been a beacon of innovation and support that we need to continue to grow our future leaders. On behalf of over 12,000 student, 12, students, their families and close to 1,700 employees, I wanna thank you for your continued generosity and ability to see the humanity of the work of public education systems. If I, the daughter of immigrant parents who only had an opportunity to attend second grade and first grade in their lifetimes, can stand before you as the superintendent of Santa Barbara, having earned a doctorate degree, yes, at a very late age, then there must be something right with public education. Thank you for giving us hope. Sorry, I, I was moved by uh, the last part of <laughs> Superintendent Maldonado's speech um, and really believe uh, 
in public education. And so I sat there just thinking like, yeah, that's correct, that's right. <laughs> so uh, I would like to thank Superintendent Maldonado for her remarks. Um, and I also encourage you on May 25th to come to the state of our schools to learn more. Next, I'd like to in introduce you to Ken Neuendorp. He is a former San Marcos High School soccer player who played under Coach Abe. He then went on to play at Santa Rosa City College, Westmont, and UCSB. He also coached the boys' soccer team at San Marcos under Abe uh, for uh, seven years, and then was the head soccer coach at Santa Rosa City College for three years after that. And today, Ken continues to serve our community as a board member of the Santa Barbara Athletic Roundtable and is an owner of Brashears and New Orndorp Insurance Agency here in Santa Barbara. So please welcome Ken. All right. Um, so now I'm a rule follower. I was told I had to wait till I was introduced to come up. My table is trying to get me up here. I was also told I have three minutes, so I'm hitting start because there's not a microphone I haven't met and loved. Um, <clears throat> so I was so excited when I got the opportunity to introduce Abe for this award. Um, Abe played a huge role in my life <clears throat> and my teammates' lives, uh, and, and the Hope Award is a perfect award for you. Um, hope, dreams, goals, that's what you instilled in us. You are our soccer coach. Um, but you taught us so many life lessons and you showed us how to dream and then created structure around us to help us be successful. Um, I played lots of other sports. I've never had a coach quite like you. Um, Abe was very committed to helping our team learn diversity and grow through the experience of all of us collectively. We all came from different backgrounds. We would go on, uh, on tournament trips and he would pair us up in, as roommates with people from different backgrounds. And that has shaped who I am today. I wasn't allowed to just stay in my little cocoon. I was forced to open my eyes and see what this world is all about. And I absolutely am I, who I am today because of the lessons I learned playing for you. Um, you then helped me move on and I went to every college in town because I truly believe in public education. So I spread my dollars around. Um, I even went to Antioch for grad school. I, I would have hit up Brooks, but I'm not very creative. Um, but anyways, you brought me back, taught me how to be a coach, taught me how to be a leader at a very young age, and empowered me in running a program, and that's led me to where I am today. Um, so I'm very thrilled and proud to be able to announce you and give you the Hope Award. So come on up, Abe. Let's all clap for him, and I made it within my time. Thank you, Ken, appreciate it. Um, I'd like to thank you very much, Santa Barbara Educational Foundation and the board members for this amazing honor. Thank you, Ken, again, for the kind words. Ken played for me and helped me coach, like he said, for a number of years. He's a person of very high character and is not afraid to say what's on his mind if things are not handled properly. I'll tell a quick story about Kenny. Um, I, as a coach, did, was not, it was never my style to yell at refs. You know, I kind of, you know, was not like that. But anyway, there was a game against a crosstown rival that I was really hot and angry after the game, and I let the referee have it. And I remember Ken was just a young assistant coach. He sat there just so upset, and he came up to me and said after the game that if you ever act like that again. I don't want to be part of this program. And so here's a young, young coach that has such high character and, you know, does things the right way. And we can learn a lot from our students by just listening to them. That's really important. Um, all my life coming through the ranks, I had people that mentored me and gave me a lot of support and a lot of breaks. I got a lot of breaks. I mean, I remember I got hired by the district by Dr. Kasten. I didn't have a credential. He hired me as a full-on teacher and then just told me, you got to go out there and get your credential. So I got the breaks and there were so many other things. And um, the San Barbara Educational Foundation supports these mentors and our youth for the opportunity to be successful. I thank you, San Barbara Foundation, for that. 
I'd also like to acknowledge my brother Ahmed and his lovely wife, Carolyn. They're here. Ahmed's always been there for me. We were two kids who came from Africa and were raised by a single mom who had a sixth grade education. Mom loved her boys, worked very, very hard to make sure that we were going to be successful in life. Um, Helen Murdoch, she and I have a talented and caring daughter. She's a great mom. Our daughter right now is in her PhD program at Cornell, so we're so proud of her. And Helen's done so much for education in this community. Thank you, Helen. I'd also like to acknowledge Ms. Adeline McGregor. San Marcos High School was the only school, I was the only athletic director that didn't have a secretary, a full-time secretary. And so Adeline came through, helped me out for you know, the last 10 years did everything. Save me so I could sleep at night. I appreciate you so much, Adeline, for what you've done for San Marcos. Thank you. We would not have been so successful without her help. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge some people that are here tonight that I've known since they were youth. I spoke about Kenny and his involvement with the community. I also remember Dr. Paz as a little kid at the boys club playing soccer and being out there playing pool and things like that. I'm so proud of what you do, really proud. Um, Scott Vincent is here. Scott worked as, as an attorney for the Santa Barbara city and you know, he's since done so many philanthropical things for our community. Appreciate that, Scott. Thank you. Um, John and Nellie Vincent are here. Um, I met John as a five-year-old at the Galita Boys and Girls Club, and we've remained really close since. Um, he played for me at the Boys and Girls Club and then also at San Marcos. We also coached together, and John was a counselor with me with so many backpacking trips to the High Sierras. So many of the underserved youth went with us on those trips, and a lot of them, for the first time, it was getting them out of their environment for the first time, and then all of a sudden they're backpacking in the Sierras and, you know, scared, you know, bears, things like that. But um, he and Nellie, his wife, have donated so much to the community and also globally to distressed people all over the world. And so we really appreciate what you've done. There's nothing I'm more proud of in my life than being able to influence youth that I've worked with to give back to their community, whether it's financially, volunteering, or being there to have empathy for people who need support. That's the most important thing I think I could have given. I'm very fortunate to receive many accolades in my time. This is really due to my mentors, friends, and great kids I worked with. I received a plaque over 20 years ago from the Galita Boys and Girls Club with the words that meant so much to me and I tried to live by. Uh, these are the words that were on the plaque. A hundred years from now, it will not matter what my bank account was, the sort of house I lived in, or the car I drove, but the world may be different because I was important in the life of a child. Thank you all you educators that make, that care and make a difference in our students' lives. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Coach Shahadami, for your dedication to student athletes and for helping them reach success. Now we'd like to invite Katie Shopa, the SB Education Foundation's program manager, to share a few words with us about our teacher grants program. Good evening, my name is Katie Shopa and I have the privilege of administering the Santa Barbara Education Foundation's Teacher Grant Program. I'd like to talk to you about why this program has been so transformative for our schools and later I'll invite some of our teacher grant recipients up here to share their stories about how the funds make an impact in their classrooms. As you know, teacher grants were an initial focus of our foundation when it was created 38 years ago. After speaking with many teachers in our district several years ago, we found out that many of them were still spending hundreds of their own dollars on supplies and extras for the classroom. We thought, how could the foundation not only cover those costs, 
but also empowered teachers to think creativ creatively about their classrooms and to pursue new projects. With the support of generous donors, we were able to reinstate our teacher grant program in 2018, and we've never looked back. So since 2018, we have funded almost $500,000 in teacher grants to over 300 teachers in our district. The diversity of these grant awards reflect both the critical needs and rich learning opportunities in our schools. Thanks to teacher grants and the funders who have supported them, we have more school gardens, we have more robots and drones for coding, more art supplies for school murals, and window cleaning supplies for life education special skills students, and great educational field trips to places like the Museum of Tolerance and the Huntington Gardens. And you have examples tonight, I hope you guys got to see in the back of different teacher grants, including our Dos Pueblos High School Media Program who are filming our event tonight. Give them a round of applause. We've been able to fund a few of their grants over the years for critical equipment, and we're really proud of them. So many amazing broadcast journalism skills they're learning in high school. Um, the more grants we give, the more inspired teachers are to apply. So last year, we had our largest amount of teacher grants requested ever, $330,000 in requests. We were only able to fund $100,000 of those. It was disappointing to pass over so many deserving grants. And tonight, we're here to do something about that. We have an audacious goal to distribute $175,000 in teacher grants next year. Teacher grants are a win-win for both our students and teachers. I am happy to share that we recently received a $50,000 grant from Google for STEM-focused teacher grants. Yeah. Thank you to Google and to all the other funders who have made our program so vital in expanding the possibilities of what can happen in our classroom. But one of the best ways to understand our teacher grant program is to hear from the teachers themselves. So I would like to introduce you to Sherry Bryan. She is the teacher librarian at Santa Barbara High School. Please welcome Sherry. Good evening. I want to start just by saying thank you. Thank you to Katie and the Foundation for inviting me to speak with you tonight, and to all of you for your incredible generosity. I want you to know that despite the many voices trying to convince you otherwise, our schools and our teachers are doing amazing things. I'm honored that I get to share some of that amazingness with you tonight. So I'm going to use that word, amazing, a lot as I speak with you the next couple of minutes. Uh, this is an intentional choice because as I thought and thought about what I wanted to share with you all, this is the word that reverberated. What I want to tell you about teachers is that we tend to be dreamers. We have these grand visions for our students and our classrooms and our curriculums. And we can often be heard saying things to one another like, wouldn't it be amazing if we could get this or that? Or wouldn't it be amazing if the kids had X, Y, or Z? Each time I've applied for a grant from the Santa Barbara Education Foundation, it began with a question such as this. I received my first foundation grant in 2018-19 while serving as the teacher librarian at San Marcos High School. The library had this old back room that once upon a time was filled with print reference books, but now was mostly empty. The makerspace movement in libraries was gaining popularity, as was this idea of libraries as community centers. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be amazing if we could turn that space into a place where students can go to play games or get crafty or create something? I cannot express to you the joy of seeing students on their dismissal periods coming together to play Uno or Monopoly with friends, or of seeing students sitting alone, quietly coloring or making origami or of watching them as they attempted to make mock campaign videos or newscasts for a class assignment, laughing so hard they have to do take after take after take before they get it right. Bearing witness to these things feels like watching their souls be restored right before your very eyes. It's amazing. The second time I received a grant from the foundation, I had moved to Santa Barbara High School, and it was the middle of COVID. 
My years of experience had taught me that by and large, when conducting research or seeking information, students strongly preferred digital content. I also knew that Google was overwhelming and often not at their reading level, and also returned fantastic and horrible content in about equal measure. So I thought, wow, wouldn't it be amazing if all 2,200 of our students had access to high-quality, user-friendly academic content from carefully curated eBooks and databases? And now, thanks once again to the Santa Barbara Ed Foundation, they do. That brings us to this year. Once again, my grant request began with a vision. I looked around and saw this outdated, musty, quite tiny collection of books in Spanish, and I thought, wow, wouldn't it be amazing if we had a collection of books in Spanish that served not only our emergent multilingual learners, but also our dual language immersion students and our students in the translation and interpretation pathway, and really all of our students working to improve their literacy skills in Spanish? I'm not exaggerating when I say that I have had students squeal with delight the last few weeks when they walk in and see the nearly 100 new books in our Libros en Español collection. And so tonight, I end with a question and a challenge of sorts. Wouldn't it be amazing if we raised enough money tonight to fund the dreams of teachers in our community? Wouldn't it be amazing if no request had to be turned down? Indeed, it would be amazing. Thank you. Thank you for dreaming, Sherry. And now I would like to introduce from Adams Elementary School, Principal Kelly Fresh and STEAM teacher Sean Federbush. Well, good evening. Both Sean and I are here representing Adams tonight. And I promised him I wouldn't speak for that long because he has a lot to share and so much to celebrate about the great things in our design program at Adams, but I'm the proud principal at Adams, and I also have been a board member of the foundation for a number of years and on this committee for six years. So speaking from the heart tonight, I'm just asking you as community members to listen about how important tonight's donation is to go directly towards our teacher grants. Um, as the principal of an elementary school, um, and we all have different numbers of students and different budgets, but putting it in perspective, we have about $315,000 at our little school, and that sounds like a lot, but about 85% of our budget goes towards salaries, and that doesn't leave a lot of extra money for everything else that has to be done every year at our incredible little school. And about $30,000 goes towards paper, right? just to make copies all year long. So if you're doing the math or if you've ever been a parent on a school site council at one of our schools, you know there's very little extra money to do these other incredibly impactful and wonderful things at our school. So when you think about the innovative projects that we want to do in our classrooms or the things we want to offer our students and the teachers come and say, can you help me buy flexible seating? Or can you help us produce this beautiful calendar for our school? Can you help us do some gardening projects in my classroom? Can you get us some more multiculturally sensitive books for our library? I mean, it breaks my heart to say no because those are the things I want to spend money on. So the work of this foundation and your support as a community allows our teachers to receive the funds for these incredibly important projects year after year. I have two teachers, my music teacher and art teacher, who are also here. It takes time to write these grants, but they do it year after year, and they rely on you for support. So Sean, in our design program, is a recipient also year after year, and I'm so proud of his work and excited for him to share about what that looks like at Adams. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, we're, we know what it's like to have a great boss and a not great boss, and I have a great boss, and it's easy to work around Kelly, so thank you. Um, my name is Sean Federbush. I do teach STEAM at Adams Elementary. STEAM stands for Technology Engineering, or uh, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Design, and, uh, and Math, sorry. And um, I'm an incredibly proud um, 
member of our community. Uh, the school district that I work for has supported me in amazing ways, and uh, my mentorship that I've had in this district is profound and affected me greatly, and I'm deeply indebted to that, so I just want to start by acknowledging that. Tonight I will tell you about a project. I brought a little example of the project that uh, this uh, amazing group has sponsored. Uh, I also will give you some insight into the conversation I had with my sixth grader today when I told him I was coming here. I want to start first by uh, offering an invitation. One of the best parts about my job is I get to learn. Like, it's my job to learn stuff. And uh, probably all the stuff I should have learned in high school. But now I get, to, I get paid to learn. And it's amazing. And I teach technology. So you can imagine it's kind of a full-time job to keep abreast of all the changing situations in technology. And for all the fancy computers out there that can memorize all of Wikipedia and everything ever written down and unfold proteins, they don't do what we're doing tonight. They're, they don't gather. They don't gather and celebrate generosity. And I was just like touched when I thought like, this is maybe one of the highest forms of our intelligence is gathering to celebrate generosity. So tonight, I, I, I offer you a challenge maybe, to steal your line, um, to share a vision with me for a few moments that this is one of the highest forms of human intelligence that we gather and celebrate generosity. So just hold that for a moment. So I want to tell you about this project. And of course, the technology doesn't always work, but here it is working. So uh, this is a light project. Um, it is working. It's got the light. See, that's good. Uh, this project is a capstone project for the sixth graders. They study climate uh, solutions that are currently available. They figure out how many gigatons of carbon can be extracted for how many trillions of dollars that we would pay for that solution. They model the solution in a 3D uh, environment. They uh, create a graphic that gets used. They tell another program how the laser cutter is going to cut this graphic. They uh, solder the LED lights to the microprocessor. They assemble it. They know about fasteners. They've studied electronics and coding, so they kind of know how to do all this. And then they take it home, and it sits in their home. And for a year, like I know this is true because they come back and tell me, it sits in their house, and people show up, and they go, what's that? And they go, oh, it's this cool project I did. And yeah, they might use words like gigatons or microprocessors. I kind of doubt it, but I know what will come <laughs> I know what will come across is the generosity that you have displayed just by sitting here tonight and probably financially in the past. And like a ripple effect, it will go out in our community for years to come. Like that's the benefit that you're offering my students. So my students know every cost of every one of these components. They know the cost of the, of the acrylic. They know they estimate my cost and the cost for the building and the laser cutter. And they, they know this, the, the funding, the source of this funding. Like when I showed them, like I'm coming here tonight, what would you like me to tell these people who gave you money? And they said thanks. So I'm saying thanks from all my students. <laughs> and when I press them and I say, well, you guys, why, why would they do that? Why would strangers give you money? And, and they know. They say, because they're good people. And I go, yeah. And I press them and I go, but really, like why is that? Like what makes, like why? And they go, well, I... They must value education. They must want a better future for us. Like, they know that. They're sixth graders. And they also seem to know that the distance between what is human and what is a machine is shrinking. And I think that resonates with them. And I tell them that they may be the generation that defines what the next version of what it is to be human. And it's my hope that they take your act of intelligence your highest form of generosity and incorporate that in their vision of what it means to be human. And I think they will, because they know, like, good people generate. Pe people are generous. Good people are generous. So I just want to thank you and let you know that uh, this project would not happen if it wasn't for you. Like, physically, to, to make, to buy these things, it could not happen without your generous contribution. But I think more importantly, you send a message of what it is to be a good human being. And I know that that resonates with my students. So thank you, really, from the bottom of my heart. It just touches my heart there. Um, OK, we're about to begin the most important five minutes of this program. 
our paddle raise to support our teacher grants in Santa Barbara. Remember, we saw over $330,000 in requests last year, a huge jump from previous years. And we're looking to raise a minimum. We'd love to get $30,000 tonight, but we can't do it without you. So are we ready to empower our teachers and invest in their classrooms? Let's get those paddles ready and welcome a good friend of the Santa Barbara Education Foundation, Chuck Dukas, to help us with our fundraising efforts. <laughs> good evening, Santa Barbara. How are we all doing this evening? How about a round of applause for all of our teachers here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We are so fortunate to have so many great teachers in the classrooms in Santa Barbara. But of course, we want to give not only those great teachers a great class, we want to give them the resources and the tools where they can succeed. We want to give our children a brighter future. But as Katie just said, we can't do that without all of you. We had so many $230,000 of grants that were not funded, and tonight you're going to help make those grants become a reality in the next school year. So if I'm going to try to get to a minimum of $30,000 here tonight, I'm going to have to ask to start with a large ask right away. And I'd like to know if I have somebody here tonight for the children that are in the classroom. Do we have a hero here tonight that will be so generous to kick things off by raising their paddle nice and high and making a 100% tax deductible pledge of $5,000 to get us started? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here is our first hero tonight. Can we get a round of applause? Thank you very much, sir. Two, six, seven, thank you. supporting our programs, our grants for our teachers, anyone else? Last call at 5,000. Last call. How about a round of applause for the floor? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you at 5,000. All right, we want everybody to have a part in this. Our next level tonight is a 100% tax deductible pledge of $2,500. Do I have somebody that can raise that paddle nice and high and get us started by raising? Here we go, here we go. How about a round of Two, zero, nine. Thank you very much for $2,500. Do I have somebody that can match that generosity? We are getting, yes. One, five, zero. Thank you very much, yeah. And $2,500, here comes that other one. Two, six, one, thank you. And 2,500, let's get another one. Yes. One, six, one, thank you very much, sir. 2,500. That's four. Do we have a fifth of the audience? Yes, we do. Three, two, six. Thank you so much for 2,500. That's five. Do we have a six of the audience? Do we have a six pledge to 2,500? Anyone else at 2,500 dollars? How about a round of applause for all of our five energies at 2,500? Thank you so much. We're making a difference in the classroom. We're giving our teachers the grants to be able to go right back into the classroom, ladies and gentlemen. Our next level is a 100% tax deductible pledge of $1,000. Do I have somebody that will raise that paddle nice and high? Let's get a bite for this level. Here we go, let's turn it up. Two, five, seven, thank you for the one down. I think we're going to get a bunch of them. Let's get a healthy pun to me. Let's put the paddles up. Here, pizza. Here, number one, two, four. One thousand hours. One seventy seven. One thousand hours. One zero six. One thousand hours. One four six. One thousand hours. Where's the next pledge? One thousand hours. One two nine. One thousand hours. Three, two, six, one thousand hours. Looking for another 
you $1,000. Anybody else? $1,000. Looking for another budget, $1,000. Anyone else in the thousands? You just got a bunch of. Hey, oh, yeah, there's another one. There's two. Two. Five. I want to thank you very much, Eric. $1,000. Anyone else? Anyone else? Every dollar is adding up to be able to provide our teachers with these grants. We're seeing some of our grants in action with our television and production. Give them a round of applause in the back. Anyone else? Let's call it a thousand. How about a round of applause for all those punches at one thousand dollars? Let's go to our next level tonight, and that is getting our paddles up nice and high. A one hundred percent tax deductible flush of five hundred dollars. Let's get at least ten, ladies and gentlemen. Do I have somebody that can kick things off by raising their paddle nice and high and picking it up at the $500 level? Let's get the paddles up. Here we go. Better on the one, zero, nine. Five hundred dollars, two, four, zero. Five hundred dollars, two, zero, eight. Five hundred dollars, two, one, six. Five hundred dollars, one, zero, nine. Five hundred dollars, one, three, seven. Five hundred dollars, two, two, two. Five hundred dollars. Anybody else at five hundred dollars? Looking for another pledge of five hundred dollars. Anybody else? Yes. Two zero zero. Five hundred dollars. Looking for another pledge of five hundred. Nobody wants that that chance in there. Was able to get that. Anybody else? Five hundred dollars. Looking for another pledge of five hundred dollars. One zero nine. Five hundred dollars. Looking for another pledge of five hundred dollars. Anybody else is five hundred. All of them in the back, right there. <laughs> two, two, and thank you very much, sir. Five hundred dollars. Anybody else tonight at five hundred dollars? Last call. I'm going to round the bus of all those nice pledges at five hundred. Our next level is a 100% tax deductible pledge of $250. Let's try to get as many as we can at this level. Ladies and gentlemen, do I have somebody that can get things started by raising that paddle nice and high? A 100% tax deductible pledge of $250. Let's get the paddles up. Here we go. Banner number three, two, six. $250, two, two, seven. $250, one, two, five. Two hundred and fifty dollars, two three two. Two hundred and fifty dollars, one five nine. Two hundred and fifty dollars, two one zero. Two hundred and fifty dollars, one three two. Two hundred and fifty dollars, how many cost of the beat? Two hundred and fifty dollars, one eight five. Two hundred and fifty dollars, two five zero. Two hundred and fifty dollars, one zero one. Two hundred and fifty dollars, one four zero. Two hundred and fifty dollars, and the body house. Two hundred and fifty dollars last off. Oh, here comes a couple more. Two zero seven. Two hundred and fifty dollars one seven eight. Two hundred and fifty dollars anybody else? Two hundred and fifty dollars last off. Two fifty. Isn't that amazing? How about a round of applause for all those generous pledges and two fifty? This is it. You've heard from all our teachers here tonight. We want to give them the tools. We want to give them those grants. But there is one level, not everybody, our last level tonight is $100. Not everybody can give 5,000. Not everybody can give 500. But there is one level where we could all participate. It's about this loving, generous community, year after year. Uh, this is probably my seventh Hope Awards that I've been with you. And I wanna thank you each and every year for inviting me back into this community to make a difference. This is our last level tonight, $100. And I would love, I know a photographer is, where is she? She's right over here. I want, we don't have, we have a few students that were here, here tonight, but for all of the children that are wondering, how did this event go? Did our teachers get those grants? We would love to sum it up in one photo by everyone participating and having a hand at our last level tonight, $100. Not everybody can get 500. Not everybody can get 5,000. But everybody could give $100. So I'm going to ask right now, if we can end this amazing night together by holding up those paddles one last time, let's get one photo to sum up this loving, generous community here in Santa Barbara raising those paddles. Look at this. Look at this. 
let's get those paddles up and help me clap to the beat. Here we go. Bidder number two, two, six. One hundred dollars, two, four, eight. One hundred dollars. Look at this table. Two, six, one. One hundred dollars. One, four, six. One hundred dollars. One, four, five. One hundred dollars. Two, six, six. One hundred dollars. Two, six, seven. One hundred dollars. Two, two, one. One hundred dollars. Help me clap to the beat. And one hundred dollars. One, three, four. One hundred dollars. One, five, two. One hundred dollars. One, nine, eight. One hundred dollars. One, five, seven. One hundred dollars. One, seven, one. One hundred dollars. One, seven, four. One hundred dollars. One, seven, three. One hundred dollars. Two, zero, four. One hundred dollars. One, four, four. One hundred dollars. One, three, eight. One hundred dollars. Two, zero, one. One hundred dollars. One, zero, seven. One hundred dollars. Three, two, eight. One hundred dollars. One, one, two. One hundred dollars. One, nine, eight. One hundred dollars. One, seven, five. One hundred dollars. One, one, nine. One hundred dollars. One, nine, oh. One hundred dollars. One, one, eight. One hundred dollars. Two, three, nine. One hundred dollars. Two, three, eight. One hundred dollars. One, three, oh. One hundred dollars. Two, one, nine. One hundred dollars. One, six, four. One hundred dollars. One, six, one. One hundred dollars. Three, two, four. One hundred dollars. Two, five, four. One hundred dollars. One, zero, eight. One hundred dollars. One, six, two. One hundred dollars. Three, two, seven. One hundred dollars. One, one, oh. One hundred dollars. One, six, six. One hundred dollars. Three, two, nine. One hundred dollars. One, one, seven. One hundred dollars. One, seven, six. One hundred dollars. Two, five, nine. One hundred dollars. Two, two, five. One hundred dollars. One, three, three. One hundred dollars. One, six, nine. One hundred dollars. One, two, five. One hundred dollars. One, nine, five. One hundred dollars. Two, four, nine. One hundred dollars. Two, one, four. One hundred dollars. Anybody else? And one hundred dollars. That's what makes Santa Barbara community so special. Thank you for your generosity. However, right now, last call at 100. This gentleman right over here was the last person to raise your paddle tonight at $100. Uh, what number is that? It's 214. 214. What is your name, sir? Austin. Austin, if you were the last person to raise your paddle tonight and no one else raises again and makes another pledge at $100, you, my friend, are going to get something very, very special. You are going to get two tickets to Trevor Noah at the Santa Barbara Ball on Saturday, June 3rd, plus a wine tasting at three different wineries in Santa Ynez, a package combined over $700. Austin, you're going to win all that stuff by being our last pledge of the night. Unless, <laughs> unless someone else wants to be the last pledge of the night and they will get all that, all those tickets and lotteries. So is Austin going to win it? No, says 330. Audience, let me explain something. Every time you raise your pedal, you're making a $100 pledge. You have to be the last pledge of the night and that person will win the Trevor Noah tickets, which is all, already a tough ticket to get plus the wine tasting in three different wineries in Santa Ynez. So, is she gonna win it? No, says 102. 102 just took it away. <laughs> Who is gonna have the bragging rights of getting these tickets and the winery over $700? Is this young lady going to get it? Going once, going twice? No, says 150. She, she just stole it from you. Can you, audience, every time you raise your paddle, you're getting charged a $100 pledge. Is 150 going to win the Trevor Noah tickets in the wineries? Let's find out. 150 going once. No, 109 just took it away from you.
Do you have something against her? Why would you do? Why would you? Why would you take it away from her? Let's find out. What is your name over here? Virginia, if no one else makes another pledge at $100, you're going to get all those prizes. Here we go. 109 going once. Yo, 240. And it's at the same table. Security? No, we can. Here we go. 240. Is she going to win everything? Let's find out. 240 going once. No, 107. This is crazy. Clearly, you can tell there's some animosity at this table, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here we go. This young lady right over here. If no one else ma makes another pledge at 100, you got it. 107. No, 328. Unbelievable. All right, 328. Virginia, you, you gotta, you're going to probably be, it's going around the table. Here we go. 328 going once. Anybody else from another table can jump in. Going twice! No, 3232. Two. No, 193. 193 just took it away. This is nuts now. Here we go. If no one else makes another pledge, you go. No, she just. 109 just took it away from you. Audience, who is going to win this? Let's find out. 109 going once. Go, no, 231. 231 just took it away from you. Are you ready? Here we go. 231 going once. Going twice. No, 138. No. 201. 201 just took it away. Here we go. Is 201 the winner? Let's find out. 201 going once. Going twice. 182. No. 182. Now 138. Oh my goodness. All right, here, what is your name, sir? Nobody else makes another pledge at 100. You get it. Chris, 138, going once, going twice. No, 138, he bit, on him. He bit against himself. One, three. I have not seen that before. But listen, every, every time you're raising a paddle, it's supporting our teachers in those grants. So let's, let's not lose sight of that. Here we go. If no one else makes another pledge at 100, Chris gets the Trevor Noah tickets and the winery tours. Here we go. One, three, eight. Going once. One, four, four. She just stole it away. All right, one, four, four. You feel like you got this? Here we go. Is she going to win it? Here we go. One, four, four. Going once. Going twice. No. One, what number is that? One, five, zero again. All right. Is this it? I think we might have found a winner. Here we go. One, five, zero. Going once, going twice. No, 109 again. Let's do this. You want to go up to 200? Let's go up to $200. 200. You're making a $200 pledge. Again, the package is worth over $700. And those Trevor Noah tickets on Saturday night are not an easy ticket to come by. Here we go. Is 109 going to win these tickets? Let's find out. Here we go. Are you ready? 109 going once. Going twice. No, 267. He's on now with $200 each pledge. Sir, what is your name? Glenn. Glenn? Glenn, Glenn, if nobody else makes another pledge of 200, you got it. Okay, here we go. Two, six, seven. Going once. Going twice. 109 again. Unbelievable. She will not be denied. Glenn, let's take it back from her. Here we go. All right, 109 going once. Going twice. 117, no, 150, 117, and then 150. We've seen 150 come a few uh, in here a few times. This could be at 150, let's find out. 150 going once, going twice. Last call, no, 117 again, 117 just took it away. Audience, every time they raise your paddle, that's going towards these grants. Is 117 the winner? Here we go. I think this is it. 117. 
going once, going twice, last call, no one or that again. She will not be denied. Do you, who do you have your money on? Who do you have your money on? Think of who's been betting. Is this over? We're gonna find out. All right, 109. Going once. Going twice. Last, no, 207! All at $200. All right, we gotta, we gotta, here we go. 207, going once. Going twice. Last call. <laughs> Fine. Two fifty. She's gonna make a budget. Two fifty. Let's do it. She's increasing it. Two fifty. She ma she made another budget. Two fifty. So in order to take it away from her, you have to pledge two hundred and fifty dollars. Is this it? One zero nine. Going once. Going twice. Last call. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is 109. Give her a round of applause, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not have the data. We will get that to we will find out shortly. But tonight, I can't thank you once again for coming through for not only our teachers, but all of our students here in Santa Barbara. Give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for your support tonight to the Santa Barbara Education Foundation. And let's turn it back over to our great MCs. Yeah, but I'm very speechless right now. That's a lot of money. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, I know that as a student, I, like I receive all the benefits. Um, and it really does a lot of good, and it really helps. Uh, I see it with my peers, with myself. Um, I'm sure Kavya feels the same way. So thank you so much for doing this. Yeah. And we can't reiterate enough the important work that teachers do for the students. I can confidently say 100% that every single one of my teachers goes above and beyond to make sure that I not only feel like I'm growing as a student, but as a person every single day. So thank you so much for not only supporting our teachers, but supporting your future. <laughs> It is now our pleasure to introduce Karen D'Alfonso, who will be honoring State Senator Monique Lamone tonight. Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. D'Alfonso worked for the Santa Barbara Unified School District from 1978 to 2016. She was a driving force behind the Harding School second grade plays, which were always Cecil B. DeMille quality. One of her colleagues has a favorite Miss D'Alfonso quote, which is, don't sweat the small stuff. She's a love, she is a lover of reading, literature, and children, which is why she still volunteers at Harding several times a week. Welcome, Ms. Alfonso. Okay, first of all, this has to be lower for <laughs> me. Okay, good evening. Um, I'm thrilled to introduce uh, one of the Santa Barbara Education Foundation's honorees, Monique Limone. Tonight, we celebrate all educators and honor an individual who's been a student, a mentor, a facilitator, a teacher, a community activist, a school board member, and a government representative. In 1986, I was a second grade bilingual teacher at Harding Elementary School. Monique Limone was my student. At the age of seven, Monique entered the classroom as a curious, voracious learner. She was a sponge in two languages. Literature, math, science, all of it was fascinating to her. I recall her interest in reading the same children's book in English and in Spanish, holding them side by side and comparing the words and pictures, delighted with the concept that a good story is a good story in any language. 
Other students regarded her as a leader, as did I. Although Monique was small physically, I can relate, <laughs> she was full of big ideas and personality. And she was fortunate to have a supportive family who valued education. Her enthusiasm and sense of fun was infectious. All I had to do was provide learning opportunities for her. That is a teacher's dream. I had occasion to think about her over the years when a family friend was showing me his Santa Barbara High School yearbook. And I noticed that Monique was a member of his graduating class. And I asked him if he knew her. His response, oh, she's a star very involved in school activities and really smart. That didn't surprise me. As the years passed, I learned that she had attended UC Berkeley as an undergraduate and then Columbia for graduate school. The next thing I knew, she was running for the Santa Barbara School District Board of Education. As I would expect, her platform focused on high expectations for all students and the inclusion of all families in the educational process. I attended several school board meetings where she listened carefully and patiently in order to make decisions which positively affected our students. A few years later, my family would enthusiastically put a sign in our front yard supporting her candidacy for state assembly. And then in 2020 for state senate. I now follow Monique on Instagram. <laughs> I recommend it. This allows me access to current events, such as community college programs, environmental legislation, all educational issues, and healthcare opportunities. And so in a curious turn of events, I have become Monique Limon's student, just as she was mine many years ago. Monique is an exceptional individual whose life has been devoted to helping others through public service. It is my honor and privilege to introduce Monique Limon. I would only give this to you. So I have to say, um, the, the table that I'm sitting at saw uh, I didn't know uh, all the details of the program. And when I opened up the program uh, and I saw that uh, Mrs. Dalfonso was gonna introduce me, the entire table saw my reaction of like, oh, she's here, she's here, where's Mrs. Dalfonso? Um, and what Mrs. Dalfonso didn't tell you, because you know, once you're a student, even when they tell you to call them by your, their first name, it's really hard, um, is that when I was running for school board, I was asked who were some of the teachers who left an impression on me. Um, and uh, as an adult woman, Mrs. Dalsfonso's name was listed in that interview. And um, she has been someone um, who has been incredibly important in my life because I remember second grade. I remember walking uh, into the classroom uh, at Hardy and Elementary School, sitting on our square on the ground to do reading time. And I also remember being uh, a second language student, ESL, we had ESL there then. Um, and I remember that in Mrs. Dalfonso's class, I didn't feel like an other. I did not feel like an English as a second language student because there was inclusion and I belonged uh, in that classroom. And so uh, that is very, very special to me. And, and I would say that you all have no idea how incredibly special it is to have her, and I don't know who, who told who, uh, how special Mrs. Dalfonso is in my life and in the life of so many. And, uh, you know, it, it brings such emotion uh, to be here and gratitude to be here with all of you today. I look at all the tables that are here and feel so blessed that this is our Santa Barbara Unified family. I have had interactions, exchanges, opportunities. I've learned from so many of you here. And I think what's incredibly touching um, and also humbling in the deepest way is that I am that student 
that has gained so much from our public education system. I am a proud daughter of immigrant parents. I am someone who started our public education system speaking Spanish. I am someone who struggled through some of the academics, but made it through. I am someone who had incredible teachers in our schools who believed in me, who pushed harder to ensure that I would succeed. And I am someone who at the core of what I do, whether you agree or not with some of the things that I do and say, at the core is the belief that investment, that human investment yields community outcomes. And I look at you all, uh, and I look at each of you at the table, and I'm just really humble because I feel like you are the honorees. I have facilitated what this community has taught me which is to value some core, core principles related to public education that we want all of our students to learn. We want high expectations for all of us, that we must invest in every classroom and that every single teacher that is in that classroom brings an incredible opportunity to learn and grow for every student. Our education system has many challenges, and we could talk about those at length, but it is all of you who invest in education, every teacher here, the foundation, our administrators, the donors who say our community can take someone like me that, in theory, through statistics, might not have had all the opportunities and chances. But someone like me, who grew up going to the Boys and Girls Club on the east side, right, after school, who's first in my family to go to college, who you can invest in and say that that student who had the odds against her is now the first Latina, the first person of color to represent this community in the California State Senate. <laughs> This moment is full circle for me. For many years, I came, I sat, uh, and I really uplifted those that had been honored. And so when Pedro called me um, you know, a little while back, uh, Pedro is someone who I admire, and he's right. I really wanted him to run for the school board, and I think at times he thanked me, and maybe other times not so much. Um, <laughs> but when he called me, I was like, me? Me? Uh, because, for, for, again, for, I look at the community and what the community has done for this for our students here, and I, I really do feel like a facilitator of the values that are important. So I am grateful um, for this recognition, um, tickled to the max that you got Mrs. D'Alfonso to do the introduction, um, because it's so special. We don't forget ever ever the teachers who made an impact on us, ever. And that is what tonight is about, about ensuring that we give the resources to those teachers who the next this, the next that, the next leader, the next teacher, the next anything is influenced by. I am grateful to all of you for your work. Abe, what an honor to be here recognized with you. And uh, to all of you, an incredible thanks from uh, your humble senator, who really is that student that went through state preschool at McKinley, Harding School, Cleveland School, Santa Barbara Junior High, and Santa Barbara High School. And I am proud that I am a product of this community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator Monique Lamone, for all the work you do at the legislative level to make sure our education system supports all students. Thank you. Can we get another round of applause? Before we close, it's time for the centerpiece giveaway. So the person at the table whose birthday is closest to Monique Lamone's birthday wins the lovely orchid centerpiece. So drum roll. Monique's birthday is? October 30th. 
October 30th. So, so you can figure that out amongst yourselves. <laughs> Do we have any twins? Any twins? <gasps> we have a twin over, over there, there, another one over there. You say it. You say it. You say it. Okay. Miss Alfonso's birthday, right? Is actually the same birthday, October 30th. No, Miss Alfonso. It was meant to be. Okay, thank you all again so much for joining us tonight. As a reminder, wine is still available for purchase if you haven't already. And check out with the Montecito Bank and Trust before you leave to pay pledges and for items purchased. Thank you so much again for joining us, for being in community with us, and we can't wait to see you again next year. Have a good night.